What if I told you that I already failed my New Year's resolutions? I know, pretty embarrassing, right? I set out that I was gonna run every single day. The other day, I ran an amount that I have never ran before. And so the next day, I decided I was gonna give myself a little break. I failed my New Year's resolution. Now, yes, it is a little embarrassing that I did that, but the difference is because I failed my New Year's resolutions doesn't mean that it's over. Doesn't mean that I'm gonna wait another 365 days to continue out. So at any point in time, whenever you start to think that's a little too hard, just remember these five tips to start off the new year and first one is to stick it out like i said i already failed mine but that doesn't mean that it's completely over a year is a very long time there's plenty of times for mistakes and plenty of time to learn so if you have a new year's resolution to lose weight just because you had an in and out burger doesn't mean that you should completely give up one thing i like to think about is if you really do feel bad and you feel upset with yourself that you caved into these temptations and take it in for next time next time you get offered a hamburger or an opportunity to skip out of the gym anything that's going to set you off your new year's resolutions think about that feeling that you had and you're disappointed about yourself and if you're really serious about your new year's resolutions you're never going to want to feel that again so one thing i'm big on is always thinking to yourself well now you know now you know the feeling of despair and now you know how serious you are about really achieving these goals now in my personal sense i'm not upset with myself and that's because yes the other day i ran a ton and so giving myself one day off to recover it's not a bad thing in fact i think i could easily make up for it to tomorrow. So whatever your new year's resolutions are, if you're really serious about achieving these things and making a good change, you have to keep in mind that a new year's resolution isn't about being consistent from day one. It's about continuing it out for the rest of the year. So yes, you're going to have some setbacks, but just because those setbacks are early, doesn't mean that you can't do it. The next tip for the new year is trying something new. And this year, I'm taking it even more serious. I have done plenty of things that I never would have thought that I would have been interested in, but just for the sole purpose of just trying it. For the experience, I found out a lot of new things that I like, from the little things of food, fashion, or just my day-to-day -day lifestyle. Experimenting with a bunch of different things can definitely mold you into a better person. So if this is not one of your new year's resolutions, I highly suggest at least writing it down. Especially if it's something that you've always been considering, but you never pulled the trigger, I think, this new year should be the time that you pull that trigger. But it could be something as little as trying something new for your wardrobe. If there's a new aesthetic that you've been wanting to try, but you always thought that it's not for you, that you wouldn't look good in it, if it interests you, then why not try it? When I was younger and I started getting into clothing, I was really big on fitted pieces. So my entire wardrobe was always in the slim cut, slim jeans, slim shirts. And I thought, wow, this looks good on me. So why do I need to experiment with anything else? Look, sticking to one thing gets very boring very quickly. So when I started experimenting with other things, with new brands, new fits, new styles, I feel like my palette for style has changed dramatically. Yes, I still stick to the slim things. I'm wearing a slim fit polo as we speak. But tomorrow, if I feel like it, I can wear an oversized hoodie. I can wear a little bit baggier pants if I wanted to, or something like a puffer jacket, which is completely different from anything that I would wear beforehand. And it all came down to experimenting with new things. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because the main thing that was holding me back from experimenting with anything was the fact that I didn't want to be judged for trying something new and looking dumb at it. I promise you, nobody cares as much as you might think. So therefore, if you want to experiment with something, the last thing that you should worry about is what other people think. The only thing that should concern you is how do you feel in these new things? I think a good example of looking dumb would be something like experimenting with your hair. This is probably the easiest way to look dumb. And I can say that firsthand because I'm still going through that trial and error phase. Right now, my hair looks okay, but there are some days where it was just flat, didn't look good. And if I cared about what other people think, I wouldn't have even stepped outside because I felt like my hair didn't look good. In fact, my last video that I posted, my hair was completely flat. And if I were so caught up in my own head, I wouldn't have even released that video to begin with. But like I said, it's all trial and error. And so yes, sometimes you're not gonna look as good as you usually do. But like I said earlier, well, now you know. The next tip to start off the new year is the little wins. Now this is something that I've already talked about in some videos in the past, but I really can't stress the importance of the little wins. Let's say your new year's resolution is to hit the gym more. It is very easy to not stick to this goal because you don't see any progress. So your first win that you should focus on is going consistently throughout the week. And again, whatever works for your schedule. Honestly, five days a week is not the magic number. That's what works for me, but that's dependent on my schedule. Sometimes I'm too busy, I can't hit the gym, and I don't beat myself up for that. So if you're a busy person, maybe you have after school activities, whatever the case is, if you could start off maybe going once or twice a week, that should be a little win for you. Focus on these little things rather than the bigger picture. Because if you're just so focused on that end transformation without seeing any results, without thinking that you look as good as you should, then I promise you, you're more likely to stick with these things if you just don't beat yourself up for not being where you want to be. I always say the best things that come 
don't come easy. It takes a lot of patience, so therefore give yourself more time. One thing that a lot of people talk about is about extending your timeline. And I think this cannot be more true. And a question that I always receive is how do you stay motivated? At the end of the day, motivation only comes here and there. But if I stick to the little goals that are eventually going to lead up to my big goals, then I'm going to feel way better about myself. The next thing is going to be talking to new people. Now, this is especially for you younger guys. Talking from personal experience, when I was younger, I only ever wanted to talk to the people that I was most comfortable with. A lot of people feel like they're extroverted, but that's only because you're only used to talking to the people that you normally talk with. And why wouldn't you be? You are comfortable with these people. Why would you feel shy about people that you hang out with every day? So you might feel extroverted with them, but as soon as it comes down to speaking to somebody new, maybe you have your first job interview, you are not going to be as much as a good talker as you think you are. That's something that I struggled with as well. When I got my first job interview, I was stuttering, I was stumbling, I was so nervous. But the main thing that I learned is as I talk to more people, the easier it gets to talk to new strangers. The reason why I still continue this to this day, because I learned that all these strangers have their own experiences. And in fact, it's going to be way different from anything that you've experienced in your own life. And there is so much to learn from that. So whether you're going to a coffee shop, talking to these new people, taking the time and talking to your teachers or talking to somebody at your local gym. There's a lot to learn from the most random people. And all these talks and new experiences can help guide you to the goal that you eventually want to achieve, especially if you're talking to the people who are already doing the things that you want to do. So the best advice I can give to somebody who's younger is if you are interested in a certain field, then try to talk to people who are currently in that field. I know it's a little bit intimidating. It's a little bit scary. Like I said, trust me, I've been there. But the better I get at talking to new people, I'm going to be able to talk to them very easily. And again, at the end of the day, that's pretty much my goal. That's also another great way to build up your confidence. I'm actually dropping my first ebook, explaining everything I did to become the most confident version of myself that I currently am. That being said, one thing that I talk about is the fact that everybody thinks that your confidence solely relies on the way that you look, that the better physique you get, the more clear your skin is, this is how you become more confident. Well, in fact, it's the complete opposite. It actually comes down to your confidence. Because once you accomplish things that you never thought were possible, you start to realize there's really nothing that you can achieve. Once you put in the work, once you put in the effort, you start to realize all these things that seem impossible are in fact very possible when you put in the effort. Again, that's how my confidence has raised. It's exactly what I'm teaching in that ebook. The next tip that I can give to this new year is self-reflect, which is something that I've really been big on, especially in the last six months. This new year, the main thing you should focus on is learning more about yourself. And the best way to do that is by self-reflecting. If you write down in your journal the things that you genuinely enjoy doing, and you also write down the things that you really didn't enjoy, you'll have a clear-cut path to do the things in your day-to-day -day that's actually going to help you become your best version. Again, this is another reason why my confidence has skyrocketed. I learned a lot about myself last year, and all the things that I'm proud of and I enjoy doing, that's exactly what I'm sticking with this new year. A huge mistake that I did when I was younger is thinking that a new car, designer clothes, all these things were going to be the things that make me happy. Because in the surface, that's exactly what I wanted, materialistic items. But as I got to learn about myself, I realized, yes, these things are cool, but it's not what's going to make me happy. But building things, seeing results in the gym, seeing results within myself, that is actually what has made me happy. And again, that's something I wouldn't have known, but I didn't self-reflect here and there. And so if you haven't already, first thing you need to do going into this new year, buy yourself a journal. Doesn't matter the brand, doesn't matter the size, just get something that you could write in. Take some time throughout your day, every other day, once a week, doesn't matter. Learn about yourself. That being said, if you are on the younger side and you want to know five tips that are going to help you within school, more importantly, how to be that guy in school, I have a video that's going to show you exactly that.